Cage Mines. We have Flavian Pilgrim joining us, sir. How you doing? I'm doing great, sir. Thank you. How about yourself? So, surfer turned mixed martial artist from Hawaii. You're out here training in New Mexico. Yes, sir. And you're getting ready to go to London for a fight. Yeah, I'm excited. So, let's start off first off. You're from Hawaii, right? From Hawaii. What was that like growing up? It was awesome. A lot of different, slow pace. Real family oriented, you know, friends and family. Are all friends and family, you know. It was good. And af athletically? Athletically, play a lot of football, a lot of sports, always in the ocean. Fishing, diving, surfing, as I can. It's good. And I've heard that surfing is a big part of your life. Definitely a huge part of my life, the ocean in general. When did you first get on a board? Shoot, I was seven, six or seven, I started bodyboarding. Was that like a whole family thing or was it something that you got attracted to? Yeah, but my best friend actually, his dad was a lifeguard. Uh, Uncle Black Abraham is a lifeguard at one of the popular beaches on the island. So we go down there every day after school, before school. Summertime, we're down there every day. So it's just part of the lifestyle, you know? And it grew to become something bigger yeah. that you competed in? Yeah, I traveled a lot. Traveled all over Indonesia, all over Hawaii. It's awesome. So definitely, I figure traveling for surfing, traveling for fighting, two different things. Surfing, you probably get a lot more time to uh, enjoy, enjoy and do some of that yeah. sightseeing, right? Right, exactly. Not cutting weight. You almost eat anything you want. What was that like seeing some of those sights, going to those magnificent places to surf? Yeah, it's crazy. You know, it's, uh, it's like most of them are third world countries, so you get there and you realize, I think I, I, think I have a bad day. These guys got it a lot tougher than I do, you know what I mean? It's crazy, it makes me take life, you know, I appreciate life a lot more and just feel blessed, whatever I got, appreciate it all, it's good, it's a good experience, I'm glad I did it young and it actually helped my outcome on life, you know, the way I look at things, the way I take things in, my patience, it's, it's good, you know, it's a blessing. How did you make the transition then, Where, when did fighting become part of your life? <sighs> to be honest, it's kind of a, just, it's part of lifestyle also in Hawaii too because you're on an island, so if you have beef with somebody, not only fighting them, you'll be fighting their family or their friends, and you'll definitely see them again. So it's a lot of fight. I'm not proud of it, but like I was in trouble a lot during, not really high school, but before high school, intermediate, elementary, just just from the ignorance around, you know, me being ignorant enough for listening to what they're saying and taking it personal and chasing them around and beating them up and being in the principal's office, and then them just not really having dark skinned like black guys are like me around you know so beating them in sports and so it's a lot of fighting street fighting so was it difficult kind of growing up there all those fights it, that mentality it, it kind of was it kind of was you know it was but it made me strong you know maybe who i am today humbled me out a lot definitely at the same time and I love the thrill of knowing that somebody wants to beat me up before I can beat them up, you know, it's kind of cool. And when did you get into a gym, get into a structure with this fighting thing? Yeah, so all that work is uh, a good friend of mine, John Holt, good training partner with uh, BJ Penn. He was my neighbor. And uh, one day, he'd he been talking to me, he tried to talk me into it for a while, a couple of weeks, a month or whatever. And finally, just got sucked in, went there and trained in his garage, did some jujitsu. Fell in love. I did a jiu-jitsu tournament a couple months after. About six months after that, I did my first MMA fight, and I was hooked. How many amateur did you have? I had, I was six and one. What did you learn? How was fighting in a cage different than what you expected from all the street fights you had been <laughs> in? Street, street fighting, for one, is definitely even more dangerous. You know, there's no ref. You gotta worry about their friends, their family stepping in. Um, and most of the time, to be honest, you're probably intoxicated or whatever after bars, bar fights, or fighting over some dumb girl or something stupid like that. And then um, in the cage, it's more pure, you know, it's real, I see it as real pure, you know, training hard for it, mindset, just pure, I love it, it's amazing. So how has martial arts changed you, changed the way you look at this? It does, it definitely changed the way I look at life, you know, patience, like I was saying earlier, patience, um, Knowing that there's somebody else always bigger and better than you, no matter what day it is, you know, you're a guy that you're better at. 50% of the time, 60% of the time, he'll get you one of those days. That's definitely a good wake-up call. 
How'd you end up here? We're at the Jackson Wink Academy. I wanted to be a Hawaii. man, man. You know, I wanted to be. I wanted to be good. I wanted to take it to that next level. How long have you been out here for? I've been here pushing eight months. Eight months. So my second pro fight here out of Jackson Wink. So I'm excited. Blessed to be on the team. Got the best training partners in the world. Life's good, man. Life's good. Second fight as a pro, or second fight out of the gym. You're traveling to London, You're getting a big opportunity. Yeah, Did you expect man. something like this to come along? <laughs> You're hanging out in the gym, and it turns out a guy is an overseas promoter who's also training here. Yeah, man, it's just blessed. You know, I think everything happens for a reason. The time is right; it all falls into place. So my time is coming. You know, just take every day, inch by inch, day by day, and just roll with it, enjoy the ride. For the most part, opponent's going to be Tyler Thomas. He has 17 fights under his belt. That's yeah, a lot of experience definitely. to go up against. What do you think is the biggest obstacle in this challenge you're presented with? Um, he's definitely game. He's definitely there to fight. Um, I just love the challenge. You know, I'm excited to prove myself and just go have some fun. You get in that cage to do your thing. What kind of fighter would you describe yourself as? Describe your style. Uh, just nasty. I like to slam people, ground and pound. Now that I've been here, I'm starting to, you know, critique all that and figure out efficiency, efficiency, and be more effective. You know, use my gas in the right ways. So it's good. So let's go out there and have fun. I gotta figure you have some really good balance from that surfboard <laughs> surfing background, right? Yeah, definitely. How has that played into training? It's good, you know, surfing is so dangerous, you can die pretty much, it's real dangerous. Does it also help you with that focus aspect? Definitely. When it's go time, you're like on time. that bur board, you're yeah. able to get that focus? Yeah, definitely. It's focus, is kind of different focuses, but it's just definitely an you know, athlete, tunnel into whatever you're doing. From BJ Penn to Max Holloway, when guys jump in this MMA thing for Hawaii they seem to they make a big name for themselves and it's really important to still go back to those roots what does that mean to you to continue in that path along with those other fighters shoot those guys are huge you know I'm just just want to be respected you know maybe my name get thrown around every once in a while when I'm retired or whatever I'll be cool with that but I see big things coming you know I'm the best team in the world I think it all falls into place when the time is right you know since you've been training, since the transitioning from sports, did you have big expectations for this or have they grown since your they've, training? Yeah, I like that's a good question. They've definitely grown since I've been here, you know, like I like to stay in my lane, I don't like to try and shoot for the moon, but I also got high expectations at the same time, you know, so I'm definitely definitely wanna fight in big organizations, fight the best. But I make I wanna make sure when I get there I'm ready to stay there and perform under the lights against the best, you know what I mean? I don't want to be there prematurely. Do you think that your patience is that much of an attribute and a positive for you? Some people are too excited to get there. They don't let the journey happen. Right, yeah, definitely. You got to enjoy the ride, man. You can't skip steps and get to the top and realize, wow, I'm here, and it all gets taken away from you from not the right preparation, you know what I mean? So the journey is part of the preparation. And what is your thoughts on getting to the top? What does it take? It takes hard work, dedication, being smart, training properly, and just taking advice from all my training partners around, you know, just being smart about it. Heading overseas, have you thought about the process with that? You went surfing, but is it different now? Cutting weight, having to think about where to buy food. How much yeah. preparation and thought does yeah. it go into something like this ahead of time? It's going to be interesting. I've definitely thought about it, but the good thing about it is I'm good friends with the promoter out there, so he's going to kind of take me under his wing and show me around. Hopefully get me some good food and all that good stuff, you know, which I believe will be, it'll be alright. It'll all work out for sure. When you look in your passport, do you still have goals of places to get there or you just keep notching off the yeah, list? Yeah, I want to I wanna fill that thing up and fill a couple of them up, to be honest. I wanna... What has that been? Has that been something you've always wanted to do, the travel? Yeah, I want to see the world, you know, ever since I started doing it when I was surfing, I'm like, there's a world out there, you know what I mean? It's crazy, like, to think back, I have friends in Hawaii that's never even left the island. Nothing about anything besides the island, you know, it's crazy. And advice for them is get out and travel, man. It's a beautiful place out there. It's a lot to see, a lot to learn. 
cultures to see, cultures to learn. It's awesome. Was that a big shock to you, even with the surfing, heading some of these places and what you're used to on the island to what you land and see? Yeah, definitely. Just third world country is crazy. Like, it's crazy just the way their day-to-day -day life is. It's crazy. It's just how they eat. They have like no fridges. It's crazy. Their sewage system is just mind-blowing, mind-blowing. And from the island, the laid-back life, has it been so much different to coming out here to the desert? Yeah, it definitely is. I thought it was going to be a hot desert. Shoot, it gets cold out here. <laughs> they never tell you that it can <laughs> get windy and I cold. Came out, I came out here with board shorts and t-shirts, you know. I came out here to buy a bunch of new clothes. Sweaters, sweats, heaters. Never bought a heater in my life. <laughs> you never had to buy a heater in your life? Use the heater until I got here. Being here... What does this mean to you? This has obviously been a big journey and a big move for you. You mm -hmm. left what you knew to follow this dream. Mm -hmm. It's awesome, man. It's no place I'd rather be at the moment, you know? This is where I need to be, I believe, to achieve big things. This is it, man. This is, the, this is it. The sacrifices are worth it? The sacrifices are definitely worth it. You know, at first it was kind of, do I really, is this it? Is this the right decision? Should I go home and try to make it work from home? No, nah, this is it. Everybody comes into MMA kind of that alpha male mentality. Right. But do you still get that, that homesickness when you first get out here and you got to get adjusted? Definitely. I definitely miss the ocean, that's for sure. When I go home, everything's still the same. You know, all my friends are still doing the same thing, just more kids. That's about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Heading towards this fight game, going overseas. Do you have a message for Tyler Thomas? I'm coming for you, bro. I'm coming for you. Just have fun. We're in your hometown. I'm coming to take you out in your hometown, bro. Any other people to shout out to or thank? I definitely want to thank all my sponsors, BioAston, Big Island Tents, um, DBM Dedicated to Visionary Minds, Virus, Jackson Wink, of course, all the coaches here. Thank you for the time, sir. Thank you, appreciate you.